guitar sitting behind us is by the Scottish luthier Michael Ritchie. The shape is that of a San Felu guitar. And seeing as you play uh, Michael Ritchie, Matthew, I wondered if you might uh, give us your initial thoughts on this instrument. Well, I mean, it's very, very nice. I obviously, like you say, play a Michael Ritchie guitar, um, and I, you know, I, th I think they're fantastic. Um, but it's interesting to sort of, in, for me, make a comparison with this against my own one, because um, you can talk just about it as a as a guitar. Um, I can compare it to a yes. guitar I tour with all the time, mm -hmm. play concerts on all the time, and know very well. Um, and I think um, it shares a lot of the of the similarities. It's it's really rich sounding in the bass, very direct. I mean, one of the things I like about um, uh, Michael's instruments is they're so clear. They're not kind of muddied or overly dark or overly sweet. They're very clear and very direct. Um, I think this one's quite loud, it's quite punchy, um, it has a lot of beauty in the bass. Um, the, the treble is, is kind of bright and very alive. Yes. It, it's not overly sweet, um, you have to work a little bit to get that sweetness to come out, um, but when you do, it's got a really, you know, <coughs> very good sweet yeah. spot to it. Michael, um, a bit like one of our previous episodes, um, a bit like Jake Fuller, the English maker, is a kind of relatively young guitar maker, like 15, 16 years of building. Um, what strikes me about Michael's guitars is the, the creativity and the artistry. He's a real artisan. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the look of the instrument, um, the, the, the different sort of uh, sounds that you can get out of it. You know, he's he's interested in the instrument being alive and being a sort yeah. of a, a musical tool. You know, he's not building a piece of furniture like you know sometimes right. you can you can you can get in, in the world of luthery. You know. Yeah, and and I think for that reason we can really call it truly a Spanish guitar. <laughs> for sure. It's yeah. it's not something you, you you find all that much actually. No. And a sense of a guitar that that is a living breathing instrument. Yeah. 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 And one uh, that you would collaborate with when playing a yeah. piece almost. Yeah. It, it, it suggests things to you. Yeah. And uh, I, I think that's a rather wonderful uh, uh, aspect of, of guitar playing. It's something quite unique to the guitar actually, and yeah. not something that we should we should necessarily uh, uh, frown upon. So I was really interested in uh, something you picked up on there was almost calling it, you know, um, you know, giving it the sort of um, the title of it. It could be called a Spanish guitar, um, and it's interesting. Michael's background is 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 nice because it links to another one of our episodes. Um, he was originally a pupil of Bill Keldy, and um, he then studied in London. And then after a period building, sort of after that studies on his own, he travelled to Granada, and he and he stayed there for quite some time, really learning the the art of, of luthery from from Rolf Eckinger um, uh, there in Granada. So you know, Michael's guitars are traditional, very traditional in their construction and following these sort of Spanish uh, body shapes, um, but also they have the characteristic and sound of a, of a, of a Spanish guitar, yeah. you know. And you know, you were asking me, you know, about my experience with the the Michael Ritchie I own. I uh, I find it works very well in the hotter, humid, you know, yeah. climates. It's interesting, but yeah. you know, very rare for a spruce top guitar as well. Th it's yeah. great. I mean, you know, so many you know, we, we've commented on it before. I'm sure, you know, in conversation, you look at you know some of the world's you know most great classical guitarists. They're all often playing cedar guitars like Manuel Barueco or mm -hmm. David Russell. These guys are touring all the time. Um, and you yourself do a fair amount of touring, and as do I. But you know, I'm always taking a spruce guitar with me. And you know other spruce guitars that I own kind of sometimes can feel a bit lethargic, you know, yes. when you go to a really hot and humid climate. Um, Michael's guitar, uh, the one I have certainly, and I'm pretty sure this construction is so similar, this one would react the same way. They kind of open up and feel really mm. alive in those climates, and it must be something to do with that construction in Granada and the way mm, that they perhaps. work with the wood and you know the way they construct. It's very interesting. I know Michael learned a lot in his time in Granada, mm -hmm. so he's probably learned to build that Spanish style very well, mm -hmm. you know. I find it quite interesting that we both chose contrasting pieces to play on, on this guitar. 
<clears throat> you chose uh, the prelude from Bach's first cello suite, and I chose the uh, Alborada by Taviga, the piece with the harmonics. Uh, and again, I think that tells us a lot about the quality of this instrument and yeah. its suitability uh, for uh, concerts and for, yeah, for, for, sure. for, for, uh, for a player who's, who needs a guitar that can handle everything. Yeah. Certainly for me, I found the harmonics on this guitar uh, very full and very sweet. A lot of the guitars, even very, very fine guitars, you find that you have to work very hard to make the harmonics sweet, particularly mm. artificial harmonics, yeah. uh, or, or in, in the, as is the case with the Tariga, natural harmonics played with the right hand. Yeah. Uh, this guitar, it just, it just does it for you almost. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's really, it's really lovely to, 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 to experience that. It is because sometimes you know um, your harmonics were sounding very full, and that's what you don't get is that that kind of breadth in the harmonics. Sometimes you get yes. a very fragile, thin yeah, you do, yeah. harmonic, you know. Um, and I just put the back really because actually I was thinking of playing something else on the guitar, and I know Michael's guitar as well. And I was just sort of it was kind of exploring the guitar through the playing of the piece, you know. And so sometimes you know you get provoked to play a particular type of piece by an instrument, and other times. You have to play the instrument, and through playing a piece of music, you sort of figure out what you think about the guitar or what you like. So I just, I really, it was kind of like a preamble, like a prelude, yeah. just mm -hmm. exploring the instrument and trying to find out how it responded <clears throat> yeah. to different things. It responded nicely to Campanella, where you, you yeah, know, sort of did. leaving everything overhanging, it had this nice bloom to it, this nice sound. Um, I mean, I, I was kind of very impressed with the guitar, and again, for me, it's just another um, strong example of, of, of his craftsmanship, um, for sure. And I think, you know, Michael, in the next sort of 10, 15 years, I think will go on to become one of the one of the best known luthiers in Europe, really. Yes. He's really uh, making a great name for himself, and uh, it's an excellent instrument. Mm -hmm. 